Hello and welcome to my laundry room. A couple of you requested that I make a video on my laundry systems that help me keep up with working full time as a teacher and uh, managing a household with five people, three kids, 10 and under, and two dogs. So um, this is my laundry room. So I'm gonna go through and try to make this as fast as I can. So hopefully you can get some applicable tips that um, can help you right away. Okay, first things first. I recently redid this laundry room because first of all, I have very, very little space. I don't know if you can see, but that's the garage over here. And then back here is bedrooms. Bedroom left, bedroom right. Um, so I have what I would have loved this room to look like, but you have to deal with the space you have and this is the space I have, so I made it work for me. Um, the most important things in here, let's see, easy to access detergent, easy to access laundry pre-treater, um, carpet cleaner I kind of put in here too for when like the dogs or they used to be the kids have accidents. Um, if you obviously have little ones, you're not going to keep tied, tied pods open and easily accessible, but with big ones, um, I'm good to go on that. I keep these random baskets here just to keep my stuff clutter free. Honestly, this is my, uh, these pants are too small or have a rip in them and I can't let my kids see it. Otherwise they're going to freak out um, <laughs> and throw a tantrum and make me try to keep them. Um, this literally has random things in it. it. It gets emptied, I would say weekly. Sometimes this has returns, library books that need to go back. Kind of like my to-do things as I head out the door into the car. Um, mask keys, all that stuff. Um, this is my nice hidden drawer bin right here. I repurposed this from something I had back in college. Um, a little, I think, desk dresser drawer. But inside of it are anything from batteries that need to be recycled to extra masks to those fun random socks that need to find a pair. Um, so those things just get tossed in here when I do some a load of laundry and um, I can't find the extras. I want to keep everything kind of out of sight so I know where I can get it quickly, but it's not in uh, visually making my space messy. Um, down here, I even have a spot for paper. So kids come in and they literally dump all their stuff on my lack of counter as they come in. I at least have a spot to put it until I'm able to get to it. And then just a random bin of extra stuff as it pertains to laundry. Um, up here, I have baskets. Each, each room has a basket. So I have my husband and my basket over here. We have two top and bottom. Once again, lack of space, not ideal. Austin has one, Savannah has one, and McKinley has one. Or should I say they have two, but they have one column. Um, and here I am after I just did one load of laundry. So the load came out, my kids all were occupied for a minute, so I sorted into piles. I have mom and dad's pile, Austin's pile, Savannah's pile, McKinley's pile, and then I have my random sock friend. So it happens to be mine, which is kind of ironic. I usually don't use, lose socks. Anyway, it's in there. I'll probably find it in a pair of pants later. And now I'm going to get ready. I've sorted my piles. Now I'm going to get ready to put them in the bins above. Okay, so I've just pulled down four baskets. We had to go to the top baskets this time because the bottom baskets were full. So um, everyone's basket is down and their laundry is in it. Now, once these baskets start getting too full... That's when, um, I'll talk to you about that in a minute, how I get my kids to put their clothes away. But for now, they're just going to stand there until they're literally overflowing or until the child complains about not having clothes. And then if they say, Mom, I don't have any more pants, that's when their laundry bins get taken down and they get put on the floor in their room or outside their door in order to organize right away. Um, what else do I want to say about in here? Let's see. So I put them back up until they're completely ready and I'm ready to load them out. I do put towels, towel sheets, those jeans needed to be, ooh, can't see that way. Those jeans needed to be dried a little more. I have my little thing that from the fabric softener that needs to go in the garbage can. I literally dumped this into the hallway because I need to take care of that right now. And then my load of laundry is completely done. Now the system I have set up is that la hampers, laundry baskets do not go in the kids' rooms. So we have one, we have essentially two spots that kids can put laundry. laundry. Spot number one is our bedroom, which is down the hall. It's not too far. We have a one story, pretty small house. It's down in our bedroom. And the second place kids can put clothes is literally into the laundry machine. So now that I have had these baskets put up, or at least I'm going to do that right now, laundry machine is empty. And then when kids get undressed at night, they come back from swim practice and have a wet towel or come back from soccer practice. I usually have them just set it on top and not put it in. I've learned my lesson with that one. Um, if kids just put it straight in, 
the random pull-up can get put in the washing machine, and you mamas know that that's disgusting. Sometimes I know that it needs pre-treater on it before it gets washed from like a grass stain maybe, and the kids don't necessarily notice these little things before they put it in. And then unfortunately, sometimes they can't quite see in the bin or are not as observant, and they put their clothes in the bin when the bin was actually, the laundry machine was already completely clean. Um, and then they filled it now with dirty laundry, and then I have to try to do the sniff sort to figure out what's clean and what's dirty in order to transfer to the dryer and to keep in to the laundry machine. So no hampers in children's rooms. It is not my job to walk around to all the rooms and collect laundry off the floor or from hampers, um, at least in a small house. That's what works for us. If you had a two-story house or a large house, just think, where are people getting undressed and dressed? Maybe that's like in your bathroom and you can just have a laundry machine on the first floor and then one hamper on the second floor and that's it. Cut down on the responsibility of me going room to room to room or even nagging kids to have to bring their laundry in. It's like, nope, you clean up your laundry when you're done getting dressed. It goes straight into the laundry machine or on top of it. And every time I pass by, I just keep tossing things in. And then every day I do probably one or two loads, like one or two transitions. Um, and it's just kind of the cycle that's a little bit ongoing, but I never feel overwhelmed by laundry. I never get to the point where I'm thinking, oh, it's laundry day. I'm just kind of always doing a load. Um, and because I enjoy, I've done this space and I enjoy being in it. Another thing that I enjoy about my laundry time actually is I usually have an AirPod in and I tell the kids, I'm like, hey kids, mom's gonna sort some laundry, i.e. just that one load I showed you earlier. Um, I'm gonna have my one earbud in. I always keep one out just for emergencies, just in case um I have my one earbud in I, I make it a space that I enjoy that time for by listening to like a podcast or something that I enjoy I'm a really big fan of this lady on YouTube that does a podcast called the minimal mom um and she is fantastic I got a lot of these ideas from her um I think the biggest one for laundry being she said if you find yourself always doing laundry and picking up laundry off the floor specifically or picking up toys off the floor, you're always doing it, you have too much. Kids do not need as many clothes as you think they do. They do not need as many toys as you think they do. In fact, if you limit it, it's actually easier. And I'll show you what the kids' rooms look like for when they put their clothes away. Okay, so here we are in McKinley's room. You are going to be shocked to know she does not have a dresser. This is McKinley's laundry basket, or um, I'm sorry, dresser. She pulls it out. She has shirts, undies, socks, pants. That's it. This is her dresser. So um, everything is convenient in one spot. I do not expect things to be folded nicely. They just set them in an approximately the right spot. And that's it. I varied when kids do laundry in the past in a few different ways. I already told you that if kids complain about not having something like I don't have any un more undies mom then immediately that's their job <laughs> I get to take down the baskets dump them on their bed and say great now you can put some of your laundry away but making it a super super easy task and I realized a long time ago why do pants have to be folded like fit it in the basket if you're asking yourself or your problem is that well there's not enough space I can't close the drawer because the pants aren't folded well maybe you have too many pants Maybe you can do what the minimal mom calls it. She calls it a quarantine bin where we have all of our favorites. Like I'll line it up with my kids and ask them to put these pants in order from least, like most favorite, like I love it, to least favorite, like it's a backup pair. And then count out maybe seven pants, their top seven. Keep those in the main drawer and everything else, put it in your quarantine bin, which might be a bin like McKinley has up in her closet right up here. Um of you can always you don't have to give it away you can pull it down if you need to pull it down if maybe seven wasn't enough for your family but if seven got you through then great now you have less clothes to do yes you're doing laundry all the time that's never ever going to end as a mom um or as a responsible adult but it makes the drawer space and the kids I think feel like it's more manageable like putting away seven pairs of pants is way better than dumping in 25 pairs of pants and them having to to shove it into drawers and I imagine especially for kids that that'd be really frustrating and probably some adults too so um, stick with your favorites and the rest of it if you have to keep it or you're not sure and you don't want to waste your money and give it away yet put it away in a quarantine bin. And then if after a couple months you're like, you know what, we're not using any of these jeans and it's jean season, 
well, maybe we can pass them on at this time. Now, all that being said, she does have a backup drawer, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, other side of her bed. Here's her backup drawer, and it's literally just to the right of her other drawer on the side that just has jackets um, and soccer gear in it. So she does have another drawer, but this isn't like the daily drawer. That's the, you know, once or twice a week drawer, where her drawer down here is her daily drawer. Okay, now in Savannah's room. Savannah has a little bit of a different system, but still similar to what McKinley has. She has a bed with built-in drawers that I got off Marketplace recently, but same kind of thing. She has her undies and socks, shirts, dresses, pants, just all of her absolute favorites in one drawer. And then over to the left, similar to what McKinley has, she has, you know, extra leotards, soccer stuff, and, um, jammies and such in her other drawer. McKinley prefers to keep her jammies in the bathroom, in a bathroom drawer, because she feels like that's where she takes a shower, so she wants her jammies in there. Okay, so my kids shower in our master bedroom, in our shower. Um, this is like the, you know, the drawer where my husband and I keep all of our personal items, toothbrushes and such, hairbrushes and such. But um, my drawers underneath it, it's gonna seem unconventional. Austin's jammies, McKinley's jammies. Um, but one thing I really appreciate about systems in general is think about where the item, where you need to, to grab it from. So for them, it's I get out of the shower, it makes sense to have jammies right where it is. Now, I know most people would probably think like, well, why would you put that in a bathroom, you know, like in a guest bathroom or in your master bathroom, you have your children's jammies? Well, yes, because this is where they access these items. Um, so it makes the most sense for them to put them there, even if it's a little bit unconventional. But as far as systems are concerned, it is way more efficient than what? Having me go to their bedroom, like when they were babies even, go to their bedroom and get the jammies to then bring to the bathroom where I was going to wash them. Why didn't I just keep the jammies in there in the first place? If I need pull-ups like we did for a, a phase, keep them in the bathroom. They don't need to be in a different closet if... I'm gonna need the pull-up or the diaper in the bathroom after I bathe them. Why would I keep those things in a different location? Or maybe they're gonna be stored in multiple locations. Just because I'm talking about laundry, another thing I learned was about sheets. And I had this revelation that I'm constantly upgrading sheets. Like I'll buy a new sheet set for our king size bed in the master bedroom or Savannah recently upgraded to some, a full size bed with a unicorn print theme. And I noticed that I never really gave away all the other stuff. Um, so I've learned that, and this is more something I've learned to myself. Like if the kids beds get dirty, or I'm like, wow, I really need to wash their bed. Or God forbid they vomit in their bed or something disgusting. I've noticed that I do laundry right away. Like no mom's going to have their kid vomit all over their bed and then just like let it hang out all day. So I don't really need backup blankets. Like we have a couple. Every kid kind of has one little snuggly blanket. And I might keep like one extra full size sheet or one extra twin size sheet, uh, fitted sheet specifically for the kids. But all these other sheets that I just had that were taking up what minimal mom calls um what does she call it she calls it merchandise and she calls it oh gosh I'm forgetting merchandise oh it's like your inventory it's taking up space if your store was like a shop and you paid for your space why are you paying for your space of old fitted sheets that are staying inside of your cabinets or wherever you're storing your um your extra sheets if you don't actually use them and I think that oftentimes I get or people can get overwhelmed with just the amount of stuff they have and you really can shift in your mind to thinking like do we really need this no Savannah's bed got dirty so I washed Savannah's bed in the morning and by the end of the day Savannah's sheets were back on her bed so what exactly do I need a backup sheet for and as I started to think through that, and maybe, you got, maybe you're different and maybe that's not how you do it, but if I'm constantly doing like one cycle of laundry every day, then I wouldn't ever take off a sheet and then just have it sit around, what, for a few days? And so I have to make the bed with another sheet. It would be just as quick to run a load of laundry with the sheet and other just random items that I have um, in the one day and then not have another sheet. I just find that it's so much, um, I can manage it and keep up with things a lot easier that way.
Gosh, I thought this video would be really quick and here I am like minutes later um, and still talking. I just have so many different things that I could share. The last thing I wanted to share was that um, I told you how I have my kids put their laundry away and that I've lowered the standard. I have it all in one spot for them to make it as easy and as stress-free as possible. But the last thing we do is just um, simple, natural consequences. So if they see their laundry bins outside of their doors in the morning, they know that before they get up and let's say turn on the TV on the weekend, their laundry has to be put away. Or, you know, I'll have their laundry sitting in their room and then after dinner, they might say, mom, can I have a popsicle? And then I, you know, do some love and logic and say, yes, you can have your popsicle right after your laundry's put away. First your laundry, then your popsicle. Go ahead. Um, and maybe I'll make a challenge on like how long if they can get it, get it done quickly. You know, they can have a lollipop and an M&M or something like that. Um, a popsicle and an M&M, something to make it extra exciting for them if they can do it quickly without whining. Um, anyway, those are some tips that I have. If there's any other systems that you want to pick my brain about, just reach out individually. I'm not looking to making this a YouTube channel. No Danny Hobbs. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have the time to edit videos and make them look fancy like some people, but um, I do love thinking through systems. If you want me to go to your house and help you think through your specific space, just like I would have inside of a classroom, um, that's actually something that I enjoy doing. So feel free to call and invite me over and I'd love to go over that with you. Bye.